Hi Joe. Hi Bala. So talk about this line now. All right, so let's 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 start at the beginning. Let's start over here. I'm gonna make Joe a celebrity. I've done, I've done this. I've you also done should join so. already. So this will be the third time. So this is the load and unload station. This is where the vials enter the system. The vials are checked for quality, cracks, discoloration, that sort of thing, because that affects the quality check of the product on the other side. There's there's a, a, a QR code on them. That's scanned. It's put on a unique on a unique cart, and then that serializes the product. And then the cart travels to wherever it needs to go to be to be filled. Um, these are the robot robot controllers down here. There are four robot controllers in this system. There's only three sitting here. There's another one that's mounted elsewhere. Um, this is the, this is the control panel for the, the for the logic for the robotics. So this is the this is the primary controller. There's three controllers on this line. One is for the mechatronics portion of it or the material handling portion of it. One is for the process control, the liquid process. Okay. One is for safety and safety only. That one will not be accessible to the students. It's locked down. It's it's protected. Oh, the safety one is a separate controller. A complete separate controller. It's a complete separate system, and the students will not be allowed to. Move it. Got it. Because of the because of the potential hazards that are here, uh, the Delta robot will sit here. It's per currently right here. It hasn't been put in place yet. That's the dry fill. Um, the collaborative robot is this uh, the green. Basically, it's an LR mate green with the sensors in the base. This also travels on a seventh axis rail. So it's a it's an educational opportunity to understand the differences between what what could be used for collaborative use and what can't be, because the rail itself, if it's if the robot's traveling, it cannot be considered collaborative. Once it's stopped, it can be considered collaborative. So then that that kind of logic has to be built in. The other thing that's interesting about the system is when APT built it, we built it with. Um, what's called integrated motion. Mm -hmm. With integrated motion, the robots are controlled by the PLC. Programming is done in the PLC, not in the robot controllers. Got it. So three of the robots are programmed that way. One is programmed in the traditional way, so the students can see how both both methods are applied. Got it. Okay. This so is centralized the, is much better because you have one central point to control everything, right? That's the whole point of integration. Well, it can be. It can be. It, the, one of the advantages of doing it through the PLC is that if your if your support staff or your maintenance staff knows how to manipulate PLCs and work with PLCs, but doesn't understand how to program with, with robot and with robotic controllers, then they're still able to support the system. Exactly. So that's one of the things. That's, so it's it's an advantage, and it, I I don't. We'll have to ask the PTC guy or the APT guys if it's actually quicker to do it that way or not. But it is something that's unique to Fanuc and Ro and, uh, and Rockwell partnership. Uh, this is the this is the, these are the liquid filling stations. There's actually three. There's one, two, three. You see the the flow meters. These are all Anderson Hauser Coriolis uh -huh. meters. So these are the Anderson Hausers, okay? Right. Yeah. So there is one meter that's different. These are all basically the same there are some you can see there are some size differences but um, are these controlled by the control system as well these aren't controlled these give information these are these are measuring devices okay so this is this is a mag meter this is a Coriolis meter you see they're in line with each other the reason we did that is so that students can see the differences in precision between the two types of measurements these are the only, because of the low flow rates, these are the only kind of flow measurements that can actually be done other than positive displacement. So these, these actually measure mass. We can, we're measuring things as small as drops. Wow. So that's why we're doing this. It's very, it's very hard to do what we're doing here and, and to get the precision level we want to have it at, there's going to, uh, analytical models will have to be built to get the repetitive, the, the repeatability and the precision. So that's why we have it done the way we, it's done. Um, so these are just the elements. The transmitters are over here on the panel. This is the other part of the liquid skid. We've got the pumps for the four components. It's going to be a combination of water, 
I red, think yellow, colored. and blue colored dies. Ones. Okay. And you see we have high and low level switches. These are on load cells, so we can do inventory management. We can also do loss weight and compare loss weight with actual flow. Uh, you've got positive displacement pumps that are moving, moving the fluid around. Pressure is controlled either through uh, automatic uh, pressure measurement means, through pump speed control, or through traditional uh, mechanical pressure regulators. So there's a number of different options that are available for students to use. Uh, um, this is the control panel for the liquid system. These are the Anderson Hauser transmitters. Is that analog controls or digital? It's all digital. Okay. Well, we're doing it a number of different ways. So, so you see all the different connections to all these things. Typically, you use one, maybe two different types of connections to these flow controls. So these are the these are the meters, and then I'll power it up. But basically, there's the there's the the, the display panel, and these are all essentially the same. Um, so these these individual controllers these connect to the devices you saw on the other panels. Okay. So the instrument itself is a combination of the two pieces. Yeah. You see all these different connections, however. Yeah. So we are using every different type of information connectivity available from these systems. There's, so there's Ethernet, there's Direct 4 to 20, there's Pulse, there's, I, uh, there's a couple others that I don't remember what they are. But the reason we're doing that is because we can, you know, again, we can, the students can learn about the different ways to do things, learn about latencies, and we can get information directly from these up and do analytics without having to go through a control system. Wow. So it gives us a whole range of opportunities. These are the pressure regulators. So for controlling the, the pressure mechanically, we can use these. If we don't want to control these mechanically, we valve these out, and the pumps will control the pressure. Can you open that over thing? This. So what what is that control system over there doing? This is for the liquid control systems. This is this is filling the vials. Okay. So this takes its information from the main control system, which take which takes its its That's production system. order information from um, uh, Rockwell's MES system production center. Yeah. So that system will call this system. This system will do the filling. It will respond back to that system, tell them it's telling it's completed with its work, and give it all its pertinent information around the serialized product. And then it'll go back to uh, and then, so that, this is, then that information will ultimately get back up in SAP. So this is connected to the cloud then, eventually. It can be. Okay. It's all of this can be connected to the cloud. Everything's Ethernet here. Okay. Right. So you can connect. You can connect directly to each of the even each of these weight these scales. So Mettler Toledo's put put uh, scales in here, and we're using these for quality fill checks as well. And it's all completely wired and set to go. It's all ready to go. Yeah, it's all been tested. Amazing. Wow. And then this is power down here for the pumps. And then the drives are down here. I think this is the only time we can see inside. Uh, you, you, you won't allow, this is locked, right, for students or? If you have, generally, yes. If, if it's powered down and they have had proper electrical safety training and certification, then they can open, open yeah. this and go in. Lock it. <laughs> it's not powered yet. I mean, there's the, the line, it's not been set up. So these, and this one down here is currently locked, so I can't open that, which is fine. But the, the variable speed drives around the pumps are in there. Oh, this is on. Yeah, it's off. It's, it's got a key. Okay. All right. And this, this one? Is, this is the safety panel. You can see all the red, all the red controllers. So this is the. Um, this controls all the safety systems around the around the skid. So it's monitoring the data, and it is only giving feedback if it is a safety stuff. It, it controls the movement of all the robots and the line based on where people people are in proximity. All these, these safety scanners are, are everywhere and they're zoned. So for example, if the collaborative bot is moving, yeah. it can be moving over there and working just fine if somebody's standing here. Yeah. 
but if somebody moves down here and it's in the and if it's in range, it will stop or will slow down. There's there's three different ranges, and the lights tell you safe. Green is you're out of you're out of harm's way. Yellow says you're in a an interim zone, and everything will slow down. Red, it'll stop. What's the range? Uh, I don't know exactly. It's uh, it's predetermined by a, a range of safety factors that you teach put it put in place. So this line is basically like a process manufacturing line. It's a process right? manufacturing line where each each vial is its own pack. Each vial is a serialized package, and the product is made in the package. So it's not a batch filling system. It's a manufacturing system where each batch is made in each vial. So it's a you have a unit quantity of one. You can make as many as four products, four different products on the line at the same time. And then this is this. This scare robot is just for capping, and you can choose to cap or not. It's, it's entirely up to you. This is the this is the quality check. So the quality of what comes off the line is done visually. Mm. So there's a, a is it a camera based? A camera based. It's also camera, high res camera, and it's giving feedback as to what the quality of the color, the hue, the fill level, and those those parameters in the in the particular vials and their path and if it passes it goes over back to the other station it gets put in the good product output and then it gets taken away if it fails then there's another evaluation step and it goes here this is the re this is the rework station if it, it is if it's available for rework it will go here and wait until it's called now that's the hardest challenge of this whole line and this is a big manufacturing challenge in and of itself because how do you know whether or not it can re be reworked and how do you know you have an order coming that that product can be available? And what does rework mean in this case? You'd be changing a color by adding, adding a little more water or adding a little more of one color or another. So you have to understand based on what I have here, what my possibilities are. So there's gonna, so in order for this to work effectively, there will be a range of algorithms and you'll have to have a whole list of recipes you're bouncing off against in quality checks. And then your history is going to tell you as you go forward what can be reworked and what can't. Can't we put a digital twin uh, and a monitor over there to, so that they can uh, analyze different uh, options and see like what the outcome should be? They'll already know. Okay. When it comes through here, they'll know what the options are because everything's serialized. Got it. And then it'll go up into the MES system, and the MES system will keep all the will have all the recipes available and, that'll feed and all the quality requirements available and then the algorithms will have to bounce off of that. Got it. And then the question is how long do you allow it to sit there before it goes back into production? Okay. Is it a, day, yeah. is it a week? Is it a month? You know, there's a limit. Everything has a, everything has a, a, a time, a, a lifetime. Uh, this is strictly power, power distribution. Got it. And then the control system is only for the power controls here. Yep. So 480 and all of them has a HMI here right? and gets distributed out everywhere. So this whole line, and then on top here, this is also the uh, that's the uh, access point, the wireless access point. Oh, the um, the new one, the network. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the only the only wires attached to this whole system are 5G, 480 5G, right? coming in here and 120 going in over to that panel. Everything else, all networks, all controls, everything else is all is, is all wireless. And I see the name Connected Systems Institute here. Yep. Okay. Wow. And that's essentially the tour. And then there's a few other items. These are these are Toledo scales. Okay. So we can we can know exactly the weight of each vial empty. So as you pull a, put a vial in or take a vial out, because there are, there's a variation in the weight of the vial, and you need to know that so that you can so because there's a quality check weight scale over there. So you have to track that weight all the way around. So so it doesn't matter if the vials vary in weight. Got it. Because we're checking them all the time. Uh, these are Odos time of flight cameras. They do volumetric checks. They're not really included in the control system, but they're available for analytics and a range of other things. Those cameras just count? 
They're no, they don't count. Okay. They're not cameras, really. They're 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 scanners. They're time of flight scanners. They take a, a three dimensional volumetric image. Got it. Uh, so they're used to, to determine a range of things. You know what what's what happens to be in a certain place. And so let's talk about this one now. I wanted to see the magma mate. Oh, the Magnum Mover? The Magnum Mover. Okay. This is the Mechatronics, right? This is Mechatronics. This is this is motion. So this is very this is you know similar to what you would consider a servo system, except for it is all linear motion. It's uh, there's no motors. You can see there's there's no moving parts here. Um, How does it move? Then? It's a modular system. It's it's all uh, again. This is a linear motor system. The carts. That are that run on these tracks aren't here yet, but they but they essentially have a magnet built into them. Magnet, okay. The cart itself has no intelligence built into it. All the intelligence is in the rail. Got it. So you put the you put the cart on. The rail recognizes the cart. It knows where where each cart is within two millimeters. Oh wow! So you're not so you're not having to put barcode scanners around and track and find things on a line. You know exactly where everything is pretty much at any given point in time. Jeez. Uh, you can and you know turn, the speed too, right? And you know the speed, and you know how much energy each part is consuming on its in its travels. So you can actually do energy calculations, how much energy it takes to to make a certain product and transport a certain product. All that data is going to be brought out as well. Wow. So it can all be considered part of the part of the operating cost of the. Of the, of the I'm just product. going to show them how this thing is going to look like in a close up. So each cart can run it in, it, it, in, at independent speeds. Uh, they can stack up. They can they can stage. They can move. They, they all move entirely independently of each other. <clears throat> and this is the foundational part that allows for that bridge to occur. Um, and we are building the factory of the future, which means it's a modular line and. You can, it's, it's what, and, and it shows a number of different. Uh, it shows, uh, you know, disc, it's it's a combination of discrete manufacturing. It's a combination of process control. Yeah. We wanted to get as much of that mix as we possibly could. The other thing is, is the big thing with Connected Systems Institute is is allowing is allowing for research, both ITOT networking, anal, you know, a range of uh, a range of analytical methodologies, digital twinning. All the all the pieces that all the technologies that are available out there have been brought together in a meaningful way here for education, research, and adoption. So, in other words, the intent is to one of the major intents is to eliminate the risk of investment in this type of a this type of a, a program because we will have gone through this process and we will have the methodology well documented. Plus, we'll be also able to add new technology as it comes in and future. Like, and this is designed for, for growth cycle management, asset management. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that.